In the last few session we've been discussing about probability sampling. And we've discussed simple random sampling. We've done stratified random sampling. We've done systematic sampling. Now in this session we are going to talk about non-probability sampling. Now there are a number of ways that you can do non-probability sampling. But what is non-probability sampling? In non-probability sampling you are not associating any chance with the elements in the population to be selected as subjects in the sample. Now there are many ways you can do non-probability sampling. However, we are just going to focus on a few key ones that include convenience sampling, snowball sampling, judgment sampling and finally quota sampling. Now let's start with convenience sampling. Convenience sampling. Now, as the name indicates, it is based on the convenience of the researchers. Let's assume I want to study students in higher education. Now, I teach at a particular university here in Pakistan. Now, based on my convenience, I'm going to distribute the questionnaire among my own students or the ones that are studying at my university. Or if I am to conduct a research, let's say, on faculty. Now, the most suitable for me would be those that are teaching at my own university or those that I know. However, what about the rest of them? What about the rest of the population? Well, I did not give them any chance to be selected as subjects in my study because I totally based my study on convenience sampling. So this is what you call convenience sampling. The next one is snowball sampling. Let's assume I'm conducting a research on a very sensitive topic with very little subjects or very few people have information about it. Now in this case, let's say I know one person who can give me that information. I go to that person and select that particular person as a subject in my study. Now that particular person gives me details of two other people that may give me some more information on the subject. These other two people give me information on three other people. Let's say this one gives me on three, this one gives me on let's say four people. Now my sample size is, in, is increasing as I keep visiting people. So it's a tree-like structure. First I had only one person who could have given me the information. Now I've got two. And based on those two people, I've got three here and four here. So your sample size increases as you go along. So it's like you're building a snowball or you're making a snowball. The next one is judgment sampling. Now in judgment sampling, you base the selection of elements to be subjects in your study based on whether or not they are able to answer your questions, whether or not they are suited for your study or not. Now let's look at some text that I have selected for you. So non-probability sampling, it's a very good resource and the link will be shared in the description. So here is your convenience sampling. This is the most common non-probability sampling method 
You might send invitations to people in your company, students from your school you are affiliated with, in the city you live in and so on. It is referred to as convenience sampling because unless they, the targeted user group is truly limited to those people, it is likely introducing some bias to recruit just a particular slice of population. So what you're doing is you're targeting based on your own convenience. And yes, there will be bias because obviously not every single element in the population had access or were given a chance to be selected. Now snowball sampling, this type of convenience sampling is one in which those participants invited invite other participants just as we did here in, in the last of the canvas slide. And then there is judgment sampling. Let's have a look at judgment sampling. So purposive sampling or judgment sampling, you choose people by the interest qualifications or typically when they fit the general profile of the types of participants who would be typical users of a product or they are well suited to answer your questions. So you can have purposive or judgment sampling. So here is purposive or judgment sample. So for example, if you are trying to understand how experts in a particular field work on complex projects, you might seek out the best of the best and use them for your interview. So you are purposefully selecting your sample. And then finally, we have quota sampling. So well, quota sampling is more or less similar to what you do in stratified random sampling. However, the difference is that you do not select the elements from the population and by giving them equal and known chance or through simple random sampling, you do divide your whole population into groups or quotas. However, the in each quota you can select based on your convenience sampling. So what is quota sampling? You try to obtain participants in relative proportions as we did in stratified random sampling. And this is based on their presence in the population. You might, for example, try to get participants in proportions of to a distribution of age range. Let's say you can select your participants based on age. Let's say you can select them based on your gender. Let's have a look here. Quota sampling. And let's say I divide it based on age 21 to 35, 36 to 45, 46 to 55. And from here, I may select 100. From here, I may select 150. And from here, I may select 250 based on their size or their representation in the population, just as we did with stratified random sampling. And how do you select these 100? You can select these 100 based on your convenience. Now, this is how we can do non probability sampling. Now we've had detailed discussion on probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Now, obviously it is much easier for us to go with a non-probability sampling and very difficult to go for probability sampling because not every time we are going to have a complete detail of the population and every member that is the elements in the population. However, whenever you are doing non-probability sampling, be very cautious about it. Do not be too convenient or too judgmental in doing your non-probability sampling. You should have a proper structure, format. You should do it cautiously without just doing it for the sake of doing it because obviously that affects the results of your study. I hope now the concept of probability and non-probability sampling would be clear. The link to this particular tutorial will be shared in the description as well. Thank you very much.